Okay, here I will comment on the topic which I collectively call Measure, measure Decomposition and Rodon Nicotine uh, Theorem. Uh, measure the, uh, this time again we talk about the normal measures, measures which return non-negative values. So we look at the measure space like this and we look at the measure mu this time. Now the theorem I want to discuss with you, it sounds like this, it has two parts. First one says that uh, there is another measure on the same measure space and there is a summable non-negative function f such that my original measure mu admits the following representation uh, for any a from your from for, for, for any measurable subset plus plus this first component uh, measure lambda it is disjoint from the original measure m and this symbol and this term disjoint explained like this uh, it is either if you have a subset where m is strictly positive then for such subset lambda will be zero and the other way around if you have a subset such that a is positive for such subset m will be zero these two parts in the decomposition of the original measure mu they have names this one is called the singular part and this one is called the absolutely continuous part of the decomposition so shortly speaking the first part of the theorem says that every measure can be split into a singular and absolutely continuous parts with respect to another measure. Every measure mu can be split into singular and absolutely continuous parts with respect to the measure m. The second part of the theorem says that if original measure mu is absolutely continuous with respect to the m, and the explanation for that term is like this, uh, mu measure of a is zero for every a such that the m measure of a is zero. So the null sets or m null sets they automatically also mu null sets. If you have a, such a relation between mu and m then mu is called absolutely continuous with respect to m and that means this condition means that your singular part if you do this, if you do this decomposition for mu with respect to m that will this this relation will mean that the singular part will vanish all the time and you have your representation like this for your measure and that's the part which is called the radon nicotin theorem the function here f which appears here is called the radon nicotin derivative and in fact it just shows you that uh, it gives you the opposite result to one of the dis uh, one of the comments to one of the results i comment on in my earlier videos. Uh, in my one of my early videos I in one of my early videos we proved that every structure like this for every non-negative function the quantity like this represents a sigma additive measure. Now uh, the Radon Nicodem theorem tells you that if you have an absolutely continuous measure with respect to a given measure M, this measure will always be given by the, the bag integral like that. I will show you the proof, and uh, the proof it's a good example, good example of of using what is called the monotone convergence theorem. And let me just first discuss that monotone convergence theorem. It's another fundamental result about the big integration, uh, and uh, it is it's uh, it's not as transparent as many other results, and that's why I give you this result in the framework of the proof of something like a measure decomposition. So the result itself says, some, says something like this. If I have a sequence of summable functions which are non-negative and which are monotone, point-wise non-negative and point-wise monotone, or I'd rather say almost everywhere non-negative and almost everywhere point-wise monotone, then, sorry, and if you extra have that the limit of the interval like this is finite, this limit will always be, will always exist because this is an increasing sequence of non-negative numbers. There will be a limit, either inf uh, infinite or finite. So if this limit is finite, that's why I can also can say here that this limit is actually equal to the supremum, because it's, again, that this is the non-decreasing sequence of positive numbers, non-negative numbers. 
so if this limit is finite, then the function given by the pointwise limit like this, it is summable as well. That's the first claim of the monotone convergence theorem. And the second claim is that the integral of this function is exactly equal to this quantity i. Right. So the proof here is based on the monotone convergence theorem, and that's how we do that. Uh, we introduce a special set like this. It's a collection of all non-negative summable functions such that the inequality like this holds for every measurable subset. We set little a to be the supremum across this set. If you're and this proof actually works in the finite case only. For the sigma finite case, you have to do the standard extension there to the sigma finite case. So if this is a finite measure space, all of these integrals are bounded by the measure of the universal set, which is a finite number. So this supremum exists and delivers a finite number. So I can find a sequence of functions from this set, uh, which uh, delivers this supremum as a limit, like this. Now, I want to find the function in this set which will give as the integral across the universal set the number a exactly and that's where the monotone convergence theorem will work. Uh, you cannot directly apply this monotone convergence theorem to the fn functions because they are not monotone but what you can do you can consider the limit like this so you take the limit uh, not of the fn functions but of the max Pointwise max of all functions up to the index n. Interestingly enough, and I'm not going to comment on that uh, with all details. Details. Interestingly, interestingly, interestingly enough, uh, if you have two elements from this set, uh, then the max pointwise max of two elements from this set will be also element of this set. And that's the one of the properties of the Bay integration. So finite, finite max pointwise max will also be the element of this set. So we have a sequence here from this set, and that's now non-decreasing sequence or monotone sequence. The integral of each function like this is controlled by this number, well, with the universal set here. That's why I can claim now by the monotone convergence theorem that the the limit function, which I call f0, will be also the member of this set, and the integral of this function across the universal set will be number a exactly at the last claim of the monoton convergence theorem. Now what I will do next, I will introduce the lambda, remember I need to produce the decomposition, so my f, my f which, we, which appears here in absolute continuous part of my decomposition will be this f0. For lambda, we just set this quantity. I make this observation straight away. This is a non-negative quantity, so this is indeed a measure, because this is the additive function, this is the additive function, and it returns non-negative values, so this is in fact sigma additive measure. All we have to establish now is that this sigma additive measure lambda is disjoint with my original measure m, and that's how I do that. That's how I do that. Uh, let's just take a subset A such that both measures M and lambda delivers positive, deliver positive value on this subset. We gonna this is the contrary assumption to this conclusion, and we I'm gonna come up with a contradiction from this. I make the following observation: I can find a positive number epsilon such that this positive number bigger than this positive number may be scaled by this epsilon. We can always find such a relation between two positive numbers. Uh, now I make the definition like this. I will introduce a quantity nu, which will be the difference like this. I claim that this is a sign measure. It is in fact sign measure. It's a difference of two sigma additive measures. That's every sign measure of this structure. Now for this sign measure, I observe that this sign, this sign measure returns positive value. returns positive value on subset A. Uh, due to one of the properties of the sign measure, I can now claim that there is a subset in A, which is the positive set 
for this sign measure, meaning that my positive my measure delivers positive value for every subset of the set E. What I will do now, I will, I will introduce the function f1 like this, and I'm gonna I'm gonna claim that this f1 in fact a member here. Let's just see that. Let's just see that. If I compute the integral of f1 across some subset B, this is the integral of f0 across the B complement. I mean, even across the B set difference with E. Over the intersection, you will have this component and you will have this component. Now, here's my observation. This piece, this piece, due to this inequality for every subset of E, including this subset, this one is controlled by the lambda value, so this one is controlled by this value. If you replace if you replace this value with a definition for that value, we will have something like this. And now if you use the fact that f0 is the element here, so it can be controlled by the, in the integral of the f0 can be controlled by this, and if you use the fact that mu is the additive measure, additive function, we end up with something like this. And that is true for every measurable subset. That's why my f1 is an element here. Now on the other hand, we have the this observation that if you take the integral over the universal set, it will be the integral of this component and this component, and that is the value like this. Given that the measure mu of e is positive number, we ended up with something which is larger than number a, which was defined as a supremum across the set f m mu. That is the contradiction which came from our original assumption like this. So this assumption cannot be made, so either this one or this one must be zero. That's why my measure m and lambda are mutually disjoint. And that finishes the proof of decomposition theorem and the by implication the theorem of Radon and Nicodemus.